Hello friends, welcome to another virtual art class with Miss Christy. Today we are doing a tape resist art piece and this is an example of what we will be making today. You should have already registered for this program and picked up your supply kit. Your supply kit will have paper, paint, and a little pencil with tape wrapped around it because we will be using a tape, the tape to do our tape resist. The type of tape that I have chosen today is uh, just plain blue clean release um, painter's tape. You can use another type of tape if you like, but this is my favorite. And if you decide that the tape that I have provided is not enough, if you have any around the house, you can use that as well, or you can purchase your own anytime you want to do this project. Also, if you happen to have a ruler around and you really want to make sure that you get your uh, shapes and designs exactly the way you want them, you can also use a ruler from your house as well. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is move all of the supplies that I don't yet need out of the way. And that will leave, I will leave behind my paper and I will have my pencil. Now, if you're a person who really wants to make sure that your lines are, are perfect before you put your tape onto this piece of artwork, um, you can use a ruler and you can use your pencil that I provided you and you can just draw a straight line. Now, you'll want to be very careful that you don't draw it too darkly. See how light this is on the paper? I, just, I didn't use any pressure at all on my pencil. So draw it very lightly, and that way when you're finished, then you'll be able to erase it out and it won't leave any marks behind, okay? You do not have to use the pencil marks if you just want to do it any old way you want, but if you feel more comfortable, you can use the pencil marks. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to lay uh, out a design on my paper. These can be straight lines in all different directions. Again, you can use your ruler and pencil to get it all drawn out beforehand before you add the tape, or if you like, you can get the tape and just do it by itself. So I'm just gonna start unrolling this and I am going to tape it in a straight line anywhere I want. In this case, I put it over where I had the pencil mark on my paper. Press it down pretty good and then gently tear it off the end. And now I want to add another straight line. And I'm just, you can put it anywhere you want, but I'm gonna put it right here. just like that. And you can keep doing that and adding lines. Now what you want to do is the white places on your paper are where you're going to put your paint. So the more white paste places you see, the better. If you put your tape down, you don't want to put it like this. Put it like this so that you have some white space in between and you don't have um, areas that are just completely blocked off. So I'm going to take some and I'm going to put it here. And I think I have a little bit of tape left, so I'm going to put one more line and put it down. Again, I'm going to pick a spot where I have shapes, white shapes showing through. So I'm going to put it here. I won't put it there, I'll put it here where I have as many white shapes as I can find. And uh-oh, wait a minute. When I put this down, I didn't do it all the way to the end. That's okay. I'm going to pick it up because you do kind of want to do it all the way to the end. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to put it back down again. 
The good thing about this type of tape is that it's easy to pick up and put back down without damaging your paper. I think I even have a little extra tape here, so I'm gonna do one more line. Let's see. I'm gonna put it right there, and that will leave some spots there, and I will lay it down like that. Okay, I think I like the way that looks. The next thing we're going to do is paint. So I'm gonna get my paints right here. And I have my paintbrush that is included with my paint kit. And I'm also going to get a little cup of water. Make sure your cup is one that you don't drink out of. You can get a disposable one or one that you just know that your grown-up says is okay for you to use uh, that we don't have paint in it because it's not a good idea to drink out of cups that you've had paint in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paintbrush wet. This is watercolor. Water is what makes the color work. So what I want to do is I want to first add water to my paper to get it ready for the paint to be put on there. If I were to put my paint on right now, it wouldn't even stick because it needs to be wet. And if it's too dry, it just won't flow and make those pretty colors that watercolor does. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a spot and I'm just gonna wet it down with water like this. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color. I think I want to start with red in this spot. So I'm gonna put my paintbrush back in my water so that my paintbrush is wet and I'm gonna put it into, put the water into my little pot of red paint. And I'm gonna make sure I've got plenty of water in there. I'm just dripping it in there again and again. And then I'm gonna to go to the spot that I've wet down and I'm going to add my red, just like this. And you see, it kinda of spreads really easily when you have water in there, doesn't it? It just kind of swooshes and smooshes together. And it makes some really pretty designs. It almost looks like red clouds. And I'm gonna paint all of that in. Now, if I wanted to blend some colors, I could do that too. Like, I know that if I take red and I take blue, it will turn to purple. So I know that those colors look good together. So I think I'm gonna take a little bit of blue, make sure it's nice and wet, and then I'm gonna add just a little blue over here. Just let it kinda smoosh together with the red just a little bit. See how it's kinda going, spreading out? And then I'm gonna get a little purple, and I'm gonna put a little purple over on this end. Those are good colors together. And you just keep adding paint until it's as dark as you want it to be. Okay? So I have mostly red and I've just chosen to put a little purple on this corner and a little blue on this corner. If you wanted to leave yours all red, you could, or you could pick a different color. From here, I will pick another spot and wet it down. Now that I'm done with this, I'm gonna move over to another spot and I'm gonna pick another color. And this color is gonna be orange. Now as you're working, I'm working in a spot that is okay to get paint on it because it wipes right up. If you are working on a table that does not do well when you add paint to it, or you have a grown-up that says don't get paint on that, make sure that you put down a plastic cover to protect the table before you paint. That's always a good idea. I did not this time because this, will, this is just an old table and it will clean up. There, that's a good color orange. I like that. Maybe a little darker. Let's go just a little darker. Now remember, the more paint you add, the darker it gets. The less paint you add, the lighter it 
it is. There we go. That's a good orange right there. Now that I'm done with the orange though, I'm going to add different colors in each of the spots. You go ahead and work on your paint, your painting, and you go ahead and add whatever colors you want. If you want yellow, you can add yellow. If you want to make it green, you can add green. Make a different color for each spot. It's always good to just mix up your colors and make them look all different. I will see you back in just a few minutes and we'll see what kind of artwork we have created. All right, friends, I have finished mine. I have had a fun time putting this one together. Now, if you notice what I've done here, though, just like here where I had red and I just added a little bit of purple and a little bit of blue, I decided to look and see what would happen if I added um, some orange into my purple here, some red, and maybe even um, a little orange right there. And I like the way it just blends together. If you have a good bit of water on there when you add the paint, you'll notice it just kind of goes like I said before, and it just blends together very nicely. If it's too dry, then you'll get a little line like this right here, where it has just a clear line. If you want to blend it up, if it's, if it's not dry yet, then you could add a little bit more paint and just make sure there's plenty of water and, and it makes that a soft, soft non-line right there. So I am finished with my piece of work. I think I've done all the work that I want to do on it. I've added all the colors that I want. Now, at this point, it is very important. Do not take the paint off yet because it is still wet. If you'll notice as I move it, you can see the shine from the water still on the paint. It is very important to wait until your piece of artwork is completely dry before we remove the tape because if we do it too soon then when you pull the paint off it will tear the paper and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to let this sit in a warm dry place that can be in the sunshine if there's not a wind to blow your artwork away or it can be um, just in a dry area maybe with a with a light breeze on it and just let it sit for a while until it is completely dry. All right friends now we are back and I'm going to see if my picture is dry yet. It feels like it is. I think this has been sitting here for a couple of hours and it looks a lot better now. So we are ready to see our final product and see what we've done. So we need to start removing the tape. If you need to have a grown-up help you with this, that's fine. Um, because it can be tricky. I'm going to very slowly and very gently start removing the tape as slowly and carefully as I can and look and see where the tape was there is no paint. The tape caused the paint to resist getting on the paper. It did not get on the paper. It resisted getting on the paper. This is why this is called a tape resist. So I'm just going to slowly pull the paint off, uh, pull the painter's tape off, and hopefully we won't tear any of our paper by accident. If we do, that's okay. We just continue on because every once in a while it might tear. Uh oh, see how that one's tearing just a little bit right there? I'm going to very gently go from the other direction and see if I can keep it from tearing 
anymore. Yeah, that worked. So I will continue to pull it off very slowly and carefully. And as each little piece comes off, this just starts to look like a really nice painting. I like this. There we go, very gently. Two more pieces. Oh, that one tore just a little bit. I'm going to try from the other end and see if that works better. Yeah, that works better. And remember, with this painting, I started saying that you could use your pencil to mark off where you wanted to put it, but to make sure that you drew it lightly. My pencil is still there from the one piece that I did use with pencil. So I'm just gonna take my eraser and very gently remove that. And now my painting is finished. If you would like, you can sign your painting. You can sign it in the bottom with your paint or with a pencil. I'm just going to use a pencil with mine. Miss Christie. So that they know that I, anybody that looks at this, they'll know that I did this piece of artwork. Speaking of signing artwork to show who made the artwork, I would love to see your artwork. When you're finished with yours, take a picture of it and email it to me. I'll have my email down in the comment section below and feel free to share it with me. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. We'll see you next time. In the meantime, keep on painting.